So hello everyone. Uh, my name is Monica Villanueva. I'm a research engineer at SEED. It's an innovation and applied research group inside of Electronic Arts. And today I'm here to present a neural synthesis of sound effects using flow-based deep generative models. So the upward trends in size and complexity of video games puts uh, content creators under stress. Uh, traditionally, um, sound effects are created by recording sounds or using libraries of pre-recorded sounds. And you have to process, layer, and remix the, the sounds to create more complex sound effects. However, uh, field recordings can be expensive and time consuming and libraries can be very limiting. So anything we can do to make the creation of sound effects either of a single layer or a complex sound effect faster, easier, or more cost effective will improve the development process and enhance the creative experience of sound designs. And this is exactly the, the goal of our project. We want to create high quality variations of sound effects uh, given an example sound. And to do that, uh, we have leveraged the improvements of uh, speech synthesis state of the art model, in this case, Waveflow, mm -hmm. which works directly on the sound signal. And it's able to deal with longer and more complex sound effects than previous works in this area. And by creating variations using an example sound, um, we are able to control very uh, finely uh, the, the generation as well as create uh, a style transfer sound. Our model learns from an internal data set of 10 minutes of data with complex sounds that range from 1 to 10 uh, seconds. And this, uh, this data set was uh, kindly provided by DICE, which is a uh, uh, development studio inside of Electronic Arts, famous for IPs such as Battlefield. The original data set uh, was provided at 48 kilohertz, but we downsampled it to 16 in order to iterate faster. So unless explicitly stated, all the experiments in this presentation will be shown with the model uh, trained with uh, 16 kilohertz. So from the perspective of the, of the user, this is how the model works. So the user selects a sound from which they want to create variations out of. Uh, that sound is uh, uh, converted into a low dimensional representation called null spectrogram that is reshaped before acting as a conditioner to the model. We also sample uh, from uh, an isotropic Gaussian distribution, a vector that will be the source of randomness to compute variations. And finally, the model outputs the synthesized uh, sound effect. Um, all of this can be done faster than real time, both in GPU and in CPU. Um, so how do we train this? Uh, Waveflow is a type of narrative model called normalizing flow that is based on uh, uh, invertible models. Uh, that means that when we want to train uh, the model, we have a, a data set of sound effects that we want to learn from. And uh, we take both the waveform and the low dimensional representation and input them into the model. This information is converted into a vector that should be close to the distribution we are using uh, during generation. In terms of the architecture, uh, the main difference with respect to the original model is the, the dimensionality of the conditioner. The original model doesn't care for variations. So our hypothesis is that if we decrease the dimensionality of the conditioner, we will be making the reconstruction more difficult, but also easier to introduce uh, plausible hallucinations. In this case, we are uh, reducing the, the frequency domain for like changing the, the male bands. This is an example uh, for, to illustrate this, this concept in the image domain. So these three uh, images are the downsampled version of three different women, these women. However, once the, the details are lost due to the downsampling uh, uh, computation, 
multiple high resolution images can be reconstructed from it. And this is exactly the motivation behind our proposed uh, modification. So when we started working on this project, uh, we wanted to answer several questions. The most important one being, is it even possible to train a conditional wave flow model uh, to generate explosion sounds from only 10 minutes of data? And this is not trivial because the original model was trained only on speech samples and they used 24 hours of data. So if this was even possible, we would have to validate the results. We would have to do so in terms of quality so that the results are still usable. Uh, and in terms of variation, because that's the goal of the project. And to do so, we put forward these two questions. Uh, so how does these qualities or how are these qualities affected by the number of training iteration and by the number of uh, melvans used as conditioner? And to do so, we train several models. We split them into groups. Uh, and for to answer the first question, we train a model with 20 melvans and we uh, study the performance uh, across uh, different points in training. To answer the second question, we train models with 10, 15, 20, and 30 melbans, and we study their performance uh, under a fixed uh, iteration, uh, in this case, of 50,000. Uh, the evaluation was done both quantitative and qualitatively. Um, unfortunately, we didn't find strong correlations between the results. So I will just focus in this presentation on the uh, user study. We had um, 15 participants, seven of which were game audio experts, and the rest were non-experts but working on the industry. And we concatenated the sounds so that um, we could uh, evaluate at the same time quality and variation, or like the differences between these three sounds. Analyzing the results of the user study, we could see that quality was not greatly affected by uh, the number of iterations. You could see here in white, uh, the white uh, squares, the mean, and it fluctuates very little, around three. However, when between 10 and 50,000 iterations, the, um, the distributions are more compact. In terms of variation, on the other hand, there's a, a sharp decline between 10 and 20,000 iterations. We can see that uh, indeed um, having less training uh, increased the, the variation. And a very interesting point here is that we can see the, the yellow uh, points are the non-experts and they have trouble even in the training set to discern uh, or separate different sounds. However, they still do it. Um, and in terms of the melbans, so quality uh, increases with the number of melbans, with the worst model using 10 and the best model using 30 channels or melbans. Uh, in terms of variation, the best model is the one that uh, uses only 10 uh, melbans. And this is, this is uh, understandable because the less information we give to the model, the more freedom it has to create variations, but also it's harder to do so. That's probably what explains that it's the worst model in terms of quality. For the results I'm gonna uh, play later, I will use the second best model in terms of variation, which is the model that actually achieves the best quality. And interestingly enough, that quality on average is very close to that of the training uh, set. During the user study, uh, our participants left some comments that validated both our research questions and the interest of experts in this technology. I'm showing here a couple of examples. So in terms of variation, participant number two said that uh, they could hear differences at the beginning of the sound. And in terms of quality, uh, participant number 14 said that um, they couldn't believe these sounds were actually generated. And they thought this was the beginning of like a very uh, important uh, piece of, of technology for them. So I can, I can talk about hours about the results, uh, but I think you should experience yourself uh, how this uh, play out. So I'm, I'm gonna... Uh, 
show here uh, both uh, the original sound and the synthesized uh, results uh, because I don't know how it will play out with the sound system. It, these results are better heard with headphones. Uh, but yeah, you will listen to the original sound recorded by DICE and three synthesized sounds uh, produced by our model. We want to show that the model is also, uh, or generalized to other type of uh, sounds outside of the distribution of the uh, examples we use during training. So in this case, I'm showing uh, an explosion that was taken out of the internet. Since the model has only been exposed to explosion sounds, we get this kind of style transfer generation when we use a conditioner that is something other than an explosion sound. So for example, here we have a piano sound uh, that sounds like a gunshot. And also a water splash that could uh, sound like a fire explosion. Uh, in the paper, we mentioned that there's nothing really preventing us from uh, training at higher resolutions. So I'm demonstrating here a model train on the original data set at 48 kilohertz. So how can we improve on these results? As any generative task, having a benchmark and better metrics will help keeping track of the improvements in the field, but also performing extensive, more extensive uh, user studies. In order to improve the variation, there's like several approaches we can take. For example, reducing the dimensionality also on the time domain, since we only experimented with the um, uh, frequency domain but also introducing uh, variations directly in the MLF spectrogram or using some other representation uh, that fits this task. We also want to um, validate our method on a different, a completely different data set. And also finally, by uh, collaborating closer to sound designs, we would uh, guide the research in terms of controllability of the output. So some takeaways so, uh, from this talk is that we have leveraged the la latest improvements in the uh, field of speech synthesis, but apply them to sound effect generation. The quality of our uh, generated samples is close to the training set while maintaining perceivable variations, both by experts and non-experts. And this uh, is performed faster than real time, both in GPU and CPU. And as a bonus, uh, we can perform style transfer for sounds that are not uh, in the distribution of the training set. And we've shown that we can also train models at a higher sampling rate. So feel free to check out our webpage where you can hear more sounds and also notice the differences between the models and their study. Uh, yeah, that's the end of the presentation, but I'm happy to take questions now.